I have finally got my hands on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and today I'll be putting it up against its predecessor, the S23 Ultra, as well as the OnePlus 12, Vivo X100 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max in four different benchmark runs where we'll test out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling, score and frames per second. But before we get things going, I wanted to let you guys know that Versus.com and myself are running a giveaway until the end of March. So be sure to subscribe to both of our channels and click the link down below to find out how you could be one of three lucky winners to win a free Samsung Galaxy S24, S24 Plus or S24 Ultra. Now getting back to the test, all phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter, all of them have been updated to their latest available software updates, all of them are run on TSMC's 4 nanometer process node except the iPhone which runs on a 3 nanometer node, the iPhone is the only one here with two main cores and has the highest clock speed, the S24 Ultra is rocking an overclocked version of the Snapdragon. Dragon 8 Gen 3 chipsets, so its main core clock speed is slightly higher than that of the OnePlus 12. And the Vivo is running the new Dimensity 9300 CPU, which has four main cores, four performance cores, and no efficiency cores. All the Androids are using LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage, while the iPhone sticks to LPDDR5 RAM and NVMe storage. All of them have LTPO displays, which can refresh between 1 and 120 Hz. They have all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them will be used using their respective high performance modes, if available. Today we'll be running through the latest versions of Antutu version 10, Geekbench 6, 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, and 3D Mark Solar Bay, and in between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. How much better is the new S24 Ultra compared to its predecessor, and can it keep up with other top-end Android flagships, as well as Apple's latest offering? This is TechNick, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, we're going to be noting down each of their battery percentages at the start of the test. We'll compare this at the end of the test as well. We're going to be using an infrared heat gun with an emissivity level of 0.5 throughout the test, and we're sitting at a room temperature of around 26.6 degrees in Celsius. Now, all devices have been sitting idle for a couple hours before the test, so you can't really compare temperatures here, but in terms of room temperature, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is the coolest at the start, while the Vivo is the hottest. The first benchmark that we'll be running running through today is Antutu version 10, and as many of you have stated in the past, with all of Antutu's benchmarks, you can't really compare iOS to Android devices when it comes to this benchmark, since Android uses OpenCL and GL and Vulkan, while iOS uses Metal API, so you can't really compare it. But scores these days are pretty identical with version 10, since version 10 has now been more optimized in terms of CPU, memory and user experience, so it's now a little bit more comparable than before. Of course, the other three benchmarks that we'll be running through later are very cross-platform. Now, in terms of actual version 10 here, they have changed things up a bit when it comes to CPU. They have optimized more support for multi-core parallel processing. GPU is based on Unreal Engine 4. There are now two new 3D test scenes. One is a high-stress test known as Seasons, and the other one is called Coastline 2.0 for ordinary GPUs. They've also added in and changed up storage, RAM, user experience, and of course, we also have a couple things that have dropped off. But what I really like that they've included here is that they have now included video editing. Since a lot of people these days, strangely enough, actually video edits on their smartphone. I am not one of those people clearly, but it is definitely cool to know that a phone in 2024 can do this without even breaking a sweat. Now in terms of the actual Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, yes it is running an overclocked version of the 8 Gen 3 chipset, whereas the OnePlus 12 is running the vanilla Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset. Well, I guess you could kind of say the base model. Now, the only real difference here is that the S24 Ultra or the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy has a slightly higher main core clock speed as opposed to the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It's not as big of a difference this year as it was last year, but then again, last year, the S23 Ultra didn't really come over and above other Android devices running the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset throughout the year when it comes to benchmark scores. So yes, it might feel a little bit smoother on the daily, but when it comes to heavy hitting scores, sometimes it's held back a little bit and a lot of the time due to throttling. Now we'll touch base on throttling a little bit later since these benchmarks do push these devices hardware to their absolute limits. So of course, temperature is gonna be fluctuating up and down throughout the test. Now ending off Antutu, we'll be getting to our first 
measurements of temperature after our first benchmark. And 2.2 is the longest benchmark over here, so naturally they will increase quite a bit in terms of temperature. The Vivo has the highest and added the most in terms of degrees Celsius, while the iPhone is the lowest and added the least, no surprise there. Now jumping into our next benchmark app, that being Geekbench version 6, we'll only be running the CPU portion of this test. And it is a bit different this time around, since with Geekbench version 5, multi-cores were tested by multiple individual tasks. With Geekbench version 6, multi-cores are tested by one workload used and all cores work together on that shared objective, so scores are naturally slightly higher. Now jumping into temperature results after running through a CPU-driven benchmark, that being Geekbench, the lowest temperature here is the S24 Ultra, the highest is the Vivo once again, the Vivo actually throttled a bit, and the iPhone added the most in terms of degrees Celsius. Now jumping into 3 Mark Wildlife. Wildlife usually is tested at a 1440p resolution, but we'll be running through Wildlife Extreme, so it will be rendering at a 4K resolution. So it's a little bit tougher for these devices to handle, but as we saw last year, they don't really break too much of a sweat, but they can't really push such high frame rates since not many phones these days even have 4K panels. But it is still interesting to see and compare the scores and frames per second. I do love the 3D Mark test since they're nice, quick, simple, and easy to get through. They're only a minute long each, and it's nice to compare them between different platforms since they are cross-platform comparable. Now we're gonna be jumping into the results in terms of temperature at the end of 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. And after that, we'll be jumping into our last benchmark, also within 3D Mark, that being Solar Bear. But in terms of temperature, the OnePlus 12 added the most. The Vivo is still the hottest and the iPhone is still the coolest and it added the least in terms of degrees Celsius. Jumping into Solar Bay now. Now, this test is very new to 3D Mark and that is because phones these days have ray tracing built within them. Yes, that's right, all of the chipsets that are within these devices have ray tracing chips inside of them and they do impress a lot of people that are into ray tracing. Now, jumping into this and getting to kind of just the fluidity of how they're all running them, they're all running them extremely smoothly, at times I would say even smoother than we saw earlier with and Tutu. But you gotta remember that they have run through three benchmarks before getting to this one, so they might not get the absolute highest scores which is where throttling tends to come in and play a bit of a factor in terms of getting results because you've got to remember when you boot up a game for the first time it's going to run exceptionally well but once you've played it for about an hour it's going to start slowing down your device because all those components are trapped into a tiny neat little build so heat dissipation does build up quite nicely or ugly I guess you could say in the devices. Now after that test, the hottest device once again is the Vivo with over 60 degrees Celsius. Then the iPhone and the iPhone also kind of throttled a bit over there, adding the least in terms of degrees Celsius, where the Samsung S24 Ultra added the most. Now in terms of overall temperature from start to finish, of course the Vivo ended the hottest at 61.1 degrees in Celsius, and it also added the most at a whopping 26.4 degrees in Celsius. The OnePlus also got pretty hot, and the two Samsung devices were somewhere in the middle over there, with the iPhone ending off the coolest and adding the least in terms of temperature gained. Now it's a similar situation when it comes to battery drain from start to finish. The Samsung's dropped by the least, that just being 9%, but since they have larger batteries than that of the iPhone, the iPhone had the best milliamp hour per minute reading here. The Vivo was once again the worst in this section of the test. It dropped by 13% and got a very bad reading of 24.21 milliamp hours per minute, with the OnePlus 12 not too far behind that. When it comes to and 2-2 two, two scores. First place, we have the Vivo X100 Pro with over 2 million points. Second, quite a bit below that is the OnePlus 12. And just below that is the S24 Ultra with the overclocked version of the same chip found inside the OnePlus 12. The OnePlus 12 also beat the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra in terms of GPU, where I thought the S24 Ultra would come out on top here since it actually has a boosted frequency Adreno 750 GPU as opposed to the ordinary Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, but it didn't. Fourth place was of course the S23 Ultra, which actually surprised me quite a bit since it put the iPhone in fifth place. When it comes to single core score in Geekbench version six, it's no surprise to see the iPhone 15 Pro Max take the lead here. Second place, quite a bit below that is the S24 Ultra, which this time did beat the OnePlus 12, but not really by that much. And the OnePlus 12 didn't really beat the Dimensity 9300 by all that much either. And once again, I was very surprised to see the S23 Ultra score pretty well in this test. 
But a big surprise here is that the iPhone did not place first when it comes to multi-core. First place was indeed given to the Vivo X100 Pro, with third going toward the S24 Ultra before the OnePlus 12. Once again, fifth place the S23 Ultra, but this is where you kind of see a bit of a dated chip here. And the placements change again when it comes to 3D Mark. In terms of Wildlife Extreme, the OnePlus 12 took the lead over here with an average of 26.39 FPS. Not too far behind that, however, is the Vivo X100 Pro and then the S24 Ultra, which was actually quite a bit below the non-overclocked Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 found inside the OnePlus 12. This time, the iPhone came ahead of the S23 Ultra. And when it comes to the ray tracing Solar Bay benchmark from 3D Mark, the OnePlus once again placed first here, which was a tad bit better than the S24 Ultra, which this time beat the Vivo X100 Pro. Fourth is now the S23 Ultra and dead last, very surprisingly, the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Nevertheless, they all actually performed very similarly throughout all four benchmark tests, though it is worth mentioning that the Samsungs and iPhone definitely hold their battery a bit better as well as their temperatures. And in terms of their most frequently placed result, the OnePlus and Vivo placed first the most amount of times, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra placed third the most amount of times, and the S23 Ultra and iPhone 15 Pro Max got the most fifth place results. I hope that you guys all enjoyed watching this video as much as I did putting it together. Be sure to hit that link down below in order to enter the giveaway. This is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.